If you'd like to hear any Fallout lore, and I mean any lore whatsoever, check out the Patreon. From the $1 tier all the way to the $10 tier, your voice is heard every single week when I ask a question. Uh, that question will be about lore and inside of a poll on the Patreon. You get to vote, your voice being heard as we go into this week's lore. So this week's lore, by way of the Ghoulman Entertainment Patreon, is on classic inspiration from Fallout New Vegas. Classic inspiration is given to you by a man by the name of Michael Angelo. And no, that's not his real name. Michael Angelo is an artist who lives within New Vegas. He's actually the resident artist, neon artist of New Vegas. He's done uh, artwork for many of the casinos on the strip, and he's even gotten a couple of special assignments directly from Mr. House. Now, Michelangelo's real name is actually Sheldon Winthrop, who you might know his sister, Sarah Winthrop. They both grew up inside of Vault 21. Uh, Mr. House wins the rights to get Vault 21 for himself. He rigs a, a blackjack game, a poker game, a card game, and wins Vault 21 for himself that he can then turn into a hotel that he can have on the strip so he can generate even more money for himself. And he takes the bottom layer of the vault and just seals it with concrete. So it is just a living quarters and a couple other spots, right? Once everyone gets the boot, Doc Mitchell's down there, Sarah Winthrop, and also Sheldon, who will later become Michelangelo down there. Michelangelo goes to become this artist that he is. He's a very neurotic guy. He's very in his own head. There's a couple speech checks that you can do that actually negate the quest, classic inspiration, uh, because you bully him, essentially, into him not giving the quest, and I believe you get some caps out of it. He's also suffering from a condition called agoraphobia, which is a condition that I learned because of the Fallout games where he's afraid of open spaces because he lived most of his life underground. So he spends most of his life inside of his workshop on the strip at the far end of the strip, the, the all the way far end of the strip uh, where the NCR consulate is. And he doesn't like people, he doesn't like being around people, he's afraid of the openness that is outside of his workshop. You could take advantage of the way he is, his uh, neuroses and his agoraphobia, and bully him, essentially. You can pick on him and uh, he'll give you more caps for the quest. Now, he has lost his inspiration and he's looking for some work, so he tasks the courier to photograph some famous neon signs around the Mojave. He gives him a Kodiak, a C-O-D-A-C -C, Kodak, Kodak 9000, excuse me, R9000 film camera with a 24 picture film roll and the task of photographing five famous locations throughout the Mojave. Now I take my notes just like any other person, but this one, I drew, <laughs> I drew what the signs look like as a little visual representation for myself. So one of the first that he wants is the Dinky Dino Thermometer in Novak. What once was a roadside attraction pre-war was labeled as the world's second largest thermometer of the character Dinky the, the, the Dino, where you can buy little miniature Dinky Dinos inside of the Dino Bite gift shop alongside Highway 95 to show what the motel had. It had all of the most recent, up-to-date accoutrements, amenities, uh, that being vacancy and a colored television. And for those who don't know, I'd be surprised who doesn't know at this point, Novak comes from no vacancy and how it got cut off in the neon sign. Ba bam what was once a highway attraction, a roadside attraction, uh, is now, and, and just a little motel, is now a thriving city. My favorite, probably my favorite city, uh, if definitely in New Vegas, maybe in all of Fallout, like up there with Junktown, uh, what else is really high on my list? The Republic of Dave is really high on my list. Diamond City is really high on my list. I really, really like Diamond City as a concept. No, Novak is very, very, very high up on that list. And what was once this roadside attraction is now a sniper's nest for two veterans of the NCR that were snipers. Manny Vargas and my favorite companion, uh, probably throughout the entire series, Boone. Craig Sadman Boone 
And he takes the night shift and he watches and he remembers what happened. Oh, how he can't forget what had happened to his wife, Carla. The second place he sends you to is Bison Steve's Hotel and Casino. Uh, the Bison Steve is in Prim. It's a pre-war casino and hotel directly across the street from the Vicky Advance Casino. On the wiki, where I get all of my lore, fallout.fandom.com, the Nuka. Wikipedia, if you will, it says that the Vicky Advance Casino doesn't mind that they have some sort of competition directly next door. They're just kind of rolling with it. There was a woman. Her name was Old Lori. She originally ran it. She took it up. She started renting some rooms out. But shortly before the events of New Vegas, she had left. Uh, and when the, the NCRCF prisoners leave the NCRCF, they make their way to Prim and they take refuge in that hotel. Uh, Michelangelo wants a photo of the bison, Steve, it being a big bison. And it says bison arched uh, up and then arched down. It says Steve underneath. He wants a photo of that as well. The third thing he wants is the sign above the entrance of Camp McCarran. Now, Camp McCarran or McCarran Airport is the airport that you take to get into Vegas. If you're, if you're flying to Vegas, you'll get there. It's the Camp McCarran, or excuse me, the McCarran International Airport at one time, but we'll get into it. He wants the sign. It's real big. It's two pillars and what seems to be like a bus, what seems to be like a garage door and then some windows, a pi two pillars, what seem to be like propellers from like a plane. And it says McCarran Field above it. This is Camp McCarran. Again, this is a pre-war sign that is a neon sign that is his, for his inspiration. It was founded in 1942 as the Alamo Airport. In 1948, it was renamed after Nevada Senator Pat McCarran. In game, it is once it once was Las Vegas' international airport. It still is one of the international airports in Vegas. It is now a heavily fortified base that the NCR is using uh, to be right by the strip, to be right kind of inside the the Vegas action, and it's super, super fortified. You get a couple of quests here. It's a really, really interesting area to just check out. It is now known as the Harry Reid International Airport in real life. So if you fly to Vegas through the International Airport, you're not flying to McCarran. I wouldn't doubt everybody still calls it McCarran, or at least the old timers know it as McCarran, but now it's the Harry Reid International. The fourth sign that Michelangelo needs from you is the Helios 1 sign above the entrance. Now, the way that sign is, is it's almost kind of like a double outline with negative space on the inside. And the O in Helios is reminiscent of a sun. It's a very nice sign. Like, I, I was sitting there, like, looking at it. I was like, ooh, yeah, that's a good sign. I like that. Nice sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, baby. Pre-war, it was a Poseidon Energy Solar harvesting plant which if you've done the quest which I, I assume you have you can see that it's uh outside the solar panels are there it was built to usher into the solar age we're in the nuclear age in the fallout universe and honestly i think even in our universe if we could get past chernobyl and hiroshima as the concepts of things being devastating link to nuclear power nuclear power could and should and hopefully will be the future of American power, of global power. Uh, it lasts a hell of a lot longer. It's a hell of a lot cheaper to run a hell of a lot more. And this was supposed to be solar, which has just as much capability as becoming the next big thing as nuclear power. But because it's fallout, this wasn't just for solar power for Poseidon to usher in the solar era of American history. This was also a U.S. Testing facility, research and development, R&D, baby, for the Archimedes Project, a top-secret orbital weapon. And if you've done the quest and you, you get the Euclid Sea Finder, you know that once a day you can use the power of the sun to deliver a devastating blow against anyone in front of you. Truly, truly wild that that exists. And the fifth and final thing that he wants you to take a picture of is the big bottle entrance to the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters in Vegas. Uh, the headquarters of the popular soft drink from the pre-war that has then become even more popular. 
amongst the people, especially if you're looking for those blue star bottled caps. It is the corporate offices and also the bottling plant there. And it's a giant sunset sarsaparilla bottle with a little bottle cap hanging off the edge where you can sit down, take a nice photo, be a day, be a night, and you can show off to Michelangelo what that is. Now, if you complete this quest, which is a super easy quest to complete, a quest that I really, really like, once it's completed, you'll get a collect of 750 XP and can be rewarded with a haul of caps all the way up to 5,000 caps. So depending on your speech checks, you can earn up to about 5,000 caps from this quest, depending on your speech checks. Just some fun facts about this quest. If for whatever reason you kill Sarah Winthrop, uh, Michelangelo's sister, the quest just doesn't complete. If she dies for whatever reason, you can't complete the quest. You will not get the credit for the quest. It just kind of goes away. He's a very sad, very neurotic man. And even if it's a bug, I like to think that he was just like, cool, I have nothing left to live for other than my art. And I wasn't even feeling too, too hot about it as of late. I don't know why I, that resonated with me and I just enjoyed that as much as I did. If you like the idea of walking around the Mojave and taking photos, if you ever run out of film, you can go back to Michelangelo and he'll give you more. Not something that like does anything in game, but I just thought it was super neat that you can just role play uh, uh, like, a, like a shutter bug. That's all I have on the Quest classic inspiration from Fallout New Vegas. I hope you've enjoyed it. Like I said, it's kind of what I consider to be like a radiant quest, but for, for New Vegas, where Fallout 4 has these radiant quests of like, go save the settlement, or like, I need this. Fallout 3 has a lot of radiant quests that I find, I find interesting. Uh, I've been playing Fallout 3 lately, and there's little things like, go get all these sugar bombs and bring it to this one guy so he can make Ultra Jet, or... Uh, the family needs blood packs. You can sell blood packs to a certain group and then get money. Uh, there's the guy in, in Megaton who you sell him scrap metal and he gives you caps. Like these weird fetch quests. Uh, the Brotherhood has one where if you find pre-war books, you can bring them to the library. I think it's the Arlington Library. And you can sell them there and they'll give you some money. And now you have this one that is only five things and it's not like it continues. But the idea of like, oh, hey, there's some really cool landmarks here in... New Vegas. Like you could take it to Zion. You could take it to, you could take it to honest hearts and take pictures of the mountain and what have you. I just think it's cool. I hope you think it's cool because that is this week's lore. Hey everybody. Wasn't that great? Did, didn't you enjoy that? A little bit of fallout lore to start your day. Maybe midday fallout lore. Hell right before bedtime. doesn't get any better than this. If you like this, Check out the Patreon. There's a link in the description below. If you want to have your voice heard, if you want me to do a certain piece of lore, the best way to get in contact with me is through the Patreon. The people who are on screen right now, I got to thank them. Thank you to these fine folks right now. Because of them, the show can continue to grow and get bigger and better. And if you want to check it out, from the $1 tier to the $10 tier, your voice is heard every single week. I film the full Atomic Radio Hour podcast episodes live in our Discord. Hey, you know what? While you're here, check out the Discord. There should be a link in the description below. Check out my Twitter. Check out the show's Twitter. Come hang out. It's a good time. My name has been Vince. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you to the Patreon. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.